Okay, folks, welcome back. We're here with East Clinton Bulls. And we've got East Clinton Williamsburg on the mat right now. Uh, we just missed, unfortunately, we missed the first match. Thank you. Uh, Gage Morgan got pinned by Trent Brewer of Williamsburg, but now we've got Cameron Block versus Sean Tarver here. And, uh, Two nothing lead here for Block in the first period. And Tarvin's 16 and 10 on the season, 10th grader. And a lot of 10th graders in this weight class I've seen today. Yep. A lot of young talent. That's true. And a lot of these guys will probably move up together. You know, they'll see each other at sectionals and everything for years to come. Yeah. So, you know. And uh, hopefully develop some friendly rival rivalries as they go through the yeah. high school career. Cameron's got to get off that arm. He's going to get himself in trouble here. Now well, he's he could be in a scoring if he can face him. He could get into a scoring position. Yeah. He's way out front there, Chuck. This be a good place for a Peterson if he could hook that inside leg. Yeah. Now yeah, he's. Should be able to go, well, just as we say it. It's got only fit. Oh, a reverse. Yeah, just a simple little one with a slide by, but not really. I don't even know what to call that. So you want uh, We've got uh, a far hip. Cameron standing up. We've got four seconds to go in the period. And uh, here we go, going into the second period. Four to three. And Tarvin defers to Block. Block chooses down. And uh, ready to start second period action. Oh, try, try to get a suck back. Uh, Cameron's in scoring position here. If he can stand up with that chuck. He's got to get back to his base. He's Here we go. Here we go. If... Cameron, he's got to get that head off the mat. There you go. And if you can get around the corner here, post the leg, he could be in good shape. Uh, he is, uh, here we go, and, uh, oh, nice. He's in deep on the leg. Yeah. Yeah. And almost like a turf type style. Right. And there's a good little, good little rally by him, but um, uh, potentially dangerous on Tarvin and uh, Block appears to be slow getting back to the middle. Right. He's kind of holding his right arm uh, gingerly there. Tarvin. Get Tarvin mounts here. We've got a minute to go here in the period. And, uh, Block sits through, comes back oh, again. Oh, nice, little nice. funk roll, turns Change. it into at least oh, a, one there we go. He gets one out of it, gets an escape, <coughs> or a loss of control there on Tarvin. Five, four block, or five to three block. I'm not sure that that score is right. I'm not sure either, but Block's starting to push some action here. Um, it's, they're tied up. Block trying to get inside position. Both of them look kind of tired here, Chuck. Yeah, they do. Uh, you know we're. Again, we're getting into the fourth match of the day, that's right, and kind of the war of attrition starting to take place now. Yeah, we'll see who can last. Kind of reaching slowly and seeing right. what they can do here. Kind of walking each other down. Oh, and, and Block, block down gets his hips higher that. and turns that into a takedown. There you go. So, again, all about leverage right there and yes, losing position where the hips are at. And we've got out of bounds wow. here. And he gave us a gift two points on that one. Two backs there to end it, huh? So I didn't see that coming. No, I really didn't either. I I didn't see him counting it, but again, they don't have to physically show right. it, so right. he must have been. We've got 9-3 here, 17 seconds to go in the second period. Out. On the whistle, Tarver Blocks. sits out, turns and faces him, block, blocks him off. He just should try not to give up any points getting out of this period, and he'll be in a nice position. I, I think he'll be very happy just to ride out the rest of the I, time. I here. agree with you. 
He's in a little bit of trouble now. He's laying too oh, flat on Graham the mat. Yep. Yeah, Block did a nice job just kind of staying back away from it, not getting caught up in the wash there. So that ends the period. Blocks up 9-3, one period to go here. Key with a Granby roll is for the, the man that's on top is just to follow it through rather than let himself get tied up in the roll. Exactly, yeah. You want to do one of two things, either get tight and roll with him or get as far away from him and don't get caught up and go through him Can or go limp, with him. Limp arm him or something. Exactly. Kind Locke's of him, got a single air call line. potentially dangerous. Yeah, he's got the knee turned out a little bit there. Chuck, why don't you explain potentially dangerous to the fans out there? Sure. Potentially dangerous is just a stop in the action when, you know, one of the wrestlers, uh, one of their joints or something, you know, bends a little bit too far the wrong way or basically it's a preventive measure to stop anyone from getting hurt. You know, if you can see someone's knee starting to go the wrong way, you just want to stop it and let the wrestlers restart. So basically it's just a way to avoid injury there. Tarver gets back to his feet there. we got an escape here. It's now 9-4. And again, they're both pretty tired at this point. Yeah, they though. are. A uh, half-hearted knee pick effort by, um, by Block. Well, he tries a little bit of a throw, but... Yeah, and again, at this point, they're probably really... Most of the things you're seeing, they're just trying to avoid a stalling call here. Yeah, they're, they're reaching a lot and leaning, actually leaning on each other right yeah. now. Yeah, see, now Cameron opened himself up with that, but... Oh, and oh nice. there you go. Cameron kind of baited him back in. Leg attack by Block, but he's Let's on see his he hip. Can hold on, though. He's in trouble right now. He's got to get off that hip, Chuck. Yes, he does. He could be in real trouble here if, if he, he can't get, get that base. leg. Again, Tarver's inside the leg there, kind yeah, of a Turk action Block's there. Block's doing a heck of a job keeping that leg. He is, and in fact, that's what's keeping him from turn, and there yeah, you go. There he just let go of the leg, though, so... We'll see what happens here again. 40 seconds to go in the period. Long time to hold on, but Block is up right now. Wow, we could six, but, well, there we go. He just got rolled through. Looks like we're going to have maybe two back points I awarded think two, there. I think you're right. Yeah, so Block's nine, still up 9-8, eight. Eight, less than 30 seconds to go. He can't let himself get turned again, Chuck. No, he can, and he's got to watch. Referee's got to watch that elbow there. Everything's okay here. we got 20 seconds to go. And he's, block, he's got the block. leg tied up. There you Chuck. go. He's trying to block the leg He there. can pick that up. If he steps up and finishes this, that'll be a great turn of events here. It looks like Block's going to pull this out. Just can't let anything happen. And we've got a stalemate call there. Again, with no referee or no wrestler can advance their position, the referee will often call a stalemate. Now he's going to let him up and try to take him down with five seconds to there go. There we go. So he just gave Block an escape there. And, again, that's just a way to not have to go through the whole process, take the time of it. So... Williamsburg needs a takedown here to tie. Oh, oh. And Block backs up and wow. holds on for the victory, 10-8. So. Nice win for Cameron Block there. That was. That's a real character <clears throat> win right there. That's three for Cameron today. And, um, you know, he could easily be 4-0 right now. He's yeah, had he's, a nice tournament. He's had a nice day. Cameron, Cameron's looked good today. And Next up, we got Charles Erdman at 152. And, uh, and Chuck's uh, got had a win last time up. And, yes, he uh, did. We've got Dylan Bailey, a ninth grader, 14 and 12. And uh, so here we go. See how Charlie does here. Again, kind of circling each other. A little head set up. Yeah, a little, little head taps there. Moving side Trying to, to get, side. Right, looking for wrist control. Ahead. Charles, mm. kind of a half shot, doesn't get it, backs out, but unfortunately gives up the takedown. Looks like um, Bailey's trying to set up a tilt. He's got the wrist and the. Although Chuck. Yeah, but Chuck's got that leg, yeah, but he, he had a he had a good defense there. Yeah, Bailey is. Uh, now he's got the wrist happen. and a half, and that's tight. Charles could be in trouble here. Yeah, I think he, he is. Be. He's going to really have to. Yeah, boy, Bailey, like you said, Coach, with that wrist control. You know, Charles giving that up, he just didn't have a lot of options there once he got turned. Yeah, fall at 37 seconds of the first yeah, period for Dylan Bailey. Yeah, that's unfortunate for Charles. I know he wanted to give a better exhibition than that. But, but again, nice work by Bailey. Spencer Clowry, 14-3 and three district alternate right. last again, year. Unfortunately, he's going to get a forfeit here due yeah. to Rayback's injury again. But Yeah, Clowry and... Uh, Rayback met earlier in the year in the championship match at North College Hill, and um, uh, Rayback won that match. So it would have been nice to be able to get those points. That yeah, would have been a good rematch. But yep. so. Anyway, here at 70, we've got Morgan Toll and Patrick Keown. 
Keegan's a ninth grader also, 16 and 10. Really? <coughs> so Again, Toll's a sophomore, a junior, excuse me, a big, strong junior. So we'll see how the freshman handles it. Yeah, takes and him down. Keon gets the first out. takedown. That's right. Kicks him. So we're at 2-1 right now. Oh, he's, and, he's got a wizard. Oh. Yeah, there you go. N nice little duck hunter into an easy takedown for Keon. It's 4-1. Kicks him. It's 4-2. Uh, Morgan's going to have to defense this here pretty soon or he's going to be way out of this. Yeah, Keon's showing he's got some match skills. But, again, I think Morgan looks pretty tired at this he point. He does. Snap down to a takedown. I don't think you're going to get that a lot of times against Morgan. Yeah, so. I, think, I think you're right. And yeah, we don't know how much that that arm injury is affecting him either at this point. That's right. And, you know, he, he had that shoulder injury in the last match, you mean. Yeah, right. So. right. Plus, he's missed some time with injury this year already. So. Yeah, and that, that, that runs into your conditioning. Oh, it certainly does. Again, yeah, Keon looks like he may be trying to set up a stack here. He's got the... Risk control and trying to come oh. through, and maybe a butcher now. No. Nope. Yeah. yeah, he's con. Now, Keon's definitely in control. Yeah, here. He's clearly in control, Chuck. He's shown some good, uh, some good skill level too. I think I don't, not knowing anything about Keon, I would venture to guess he's uh, he's wrestled quite a few years. Yeah, any ninth grader comes out like this is uh, not foreign to the sport. Exactly. Yeah. And again, tried to throw in the legs there, out of bounds. Uh, so we're going to restart here in the middle. 38 seconds to go here in the first period. 6-2, Keown, total down here. You know, Chuck, that's the value of bitty programs where kids come in with five or six years experience going oh, into their freshman so, year. So true, so true. Yeah, I, I can't say enough about, uh, you know, the way that that's really, you know, going to change East Clinton's wrestling program when you start to see more classes of the bitty kids getting to high school. Right. Just got to keep them interested and keep them in the program. Exactly. So Toll not doing a lot here, but Keon can't seem to do much with him either. Like we mentioned before, Toll's a strong, pretty strong young man. and We've, we've seen Toll during the course of the year be down by double figures going into the second and third period and come back and pin kids. Yeah, so. he doesn't quit. And, you know, and that's the thing. Toll likes to – he's a thrower, like right. we talked about. And, right. You know, when you're a thrower, you're never really out of a match. Yeah. You, know, you catch that guy just the right way, put him on his back. and One move away from uh, taking him out. Exactly. So the end of the period there, we got the – Six to two, Keon. That's right. And we got uh, Toll down again here. So Keon yeah. on top mounts, and there's the whistle. And, uh, you know, Morgan – he can't spend the whole period down here. Or else no, he certainly can't. There's. Oh, that could have been a full Nelson. That's pretty close, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, just got to peel that hand. You got to stand up. And well, that's a nice half Keo has though. Yeah, he's in really yeah, deep and sticking the elbow in the ear, as yeah. you say, and that's a, that's a tough way to be. That's exactly right. Although told could be in a position here if uh, he could. Yeah, his hips. he was in good shape. He had that outside leg up, and that's yep. what you want. Yep. And there you go. Basically, Toll forced that potentially dangerous call by putting that leg up because, you know, either your shoulder's going to go or your leg's going to go, yeah. and One or the other. referee stopped it before either thing happened. So, again, yeah, Toll's down here, 1.30 to go in the period. Morgan's got to tap into those reserves and, and uh, put something together here. Yes, he does. Just but again, to Keown, Keown's credit, oh, he's oh, kept the pressure on, but, oh, and again, there, there's an example, Coach, like you talked about, where he stayed tight on the hip and just rolled right through yep. it yep. and rolled it out fine. Yep. Comes out, still in control, and that's, uh, he's trying to stack him, Chuck. He's yeah, Morgan, head. again, is he's yeah. fighting it, but he's got to keep that head up. And he's working on that arm, and, uh, you know, yeah. as we said, he hurt himself. Right, and there you go. He puts up the outside foot, he catches it, and puts him in a cradle. And uh, well, Morgan's yeah. in trouble right now if he can't break that lock. One of those cradles where he can't really pin him, but he's going to take a lot of time off the right, clock. Right, and probably get all the backs he wants. Yes. We can see the officials holding three fingers. So. All right, so there you go. He's going to have to break it and reapply it if he wants three more, but he does, and he comes off of it and riding the hips right now. And you know, he's got, Keon's got to be careful here not to get hit for stalling yeah. on top. That was a classic stalling position. It there. certainly was. So, and Toll tries to roll again. And he's, he's looking for a defensive pin, Chuck. If Morgan can get his hips turned into the man, it, this could work. Yeah. Or he may slide out the back right here. He but again, Keon. Here. And, I don't uh, think he can. Keon's done a nice job with that he today, does. coach. He's, he's done a 
he's a tough wrestler. Again, like we talked about, he's definitely got some experience coming into this match. For a young kid, he uses his legs really well. Yes, he does. And not only that, but a, but a young kid in the upper weights. Yes. You know, yes. you don't see a lot of legs in the upper weights. And so for a freshman in the upper weights to be running legs, that yeah. does say a lot about young Patrick Keogh. Williamsburg's had a good run of athletes lately. Their football team made the playoffs this yes, year. Yes, they did, yeah. And um, uh, you see some of those kids coming through their football program now. Right. And, and oh, Toll tried to muscle and gets caught here and unfortunately goes right to his back. And Keon's experienced enough that he's not going to let that yeah. go. So 4-10 of the second or third period, and it was 14-2, to two, Chuck. There wasn't. I guess, I guess, as we talked about. Yeah, minus that one throw. That was a foregone yeah. conclusion. I think you're right. Yeah. All right, so next up we've got Nate Morgan at 195, and he's got Justin Durham here. So actually before that happens, I guess we're going to have a forfeit at 182. Yeah, he looked a little bit light for, uh, yeah. for Nate. This is probably Justin Durham right here, so. Again, Morgan for the Astros, Durham for the Wildcats here. And Nate's had a good day today. He's uh, got a couple wins, and uh, we'll yep. see if he can add to that total. I believe. I want to say he's 2-1, and one, right? I With believe he one is. One forfeit and one pin. Yep. So that is a good day for Nate. See if he can get it to continue here. Okay, ear-to-ear -ear collar tie here. Again, just break gotta, off. He's got to get in on the leg here. Um, of course, big guys usually don't do that yeah, type of stuff. Yeah, not going to see a lot of leg attack, and I can tell you that I know from working with Nate that he's not a leg attack guy. No. So uh, if it's there, he may take it, but I, I guarantee that's not what he's looking for right yeah. now. A lot of guys at this weight are more about the throws and the Russian ties right, and things right. like that. Nobody wants to get underneath another guy and have him no. lay on yet, 195 no. pounds, right? So Not at all. <laughs> So but here we go. We got double stalling here. So neither guy really working to, for a takedown, and the referee agrees. And should have been probably called stalling. several matches ago, as we've seen a little bit more stalling here recently. Yeah, you know that, that's interesting. You say that because usually you'll see that call come out earlier in lower weights and right. later in heavier weights. Right. Because they're giving those guys time to kind of feel each other out here in the heavier weights. But, but the officials trying to make them wrestle, and that's that's a good thing. That is a good thing. So here we go. We do have a oh, shot. Oh, they could there. get around if he can down the head. If he can down the head. Durham with a shot by Williamsburg, but again, more than blocked cross, it off. Well, he had a cross face in, Chuck. Yeah, he did. Oh, and he got the two. He, he did get the two. two, yep. So Morgan that's with a defensive high, take down there. Got to be careful here. Yeah. Durham stands up, and it's rather probably, than probably good to just let yeah, it go there. Yeah, I agree. Could have easily been a reversal for Durham, so Morgan did the right thing there just to let him go. Yeah, and if, if Nate's able to take him down a couple times like we saw in the last match. That's right. You can build a lead. That's right. Durham, ooh, uh, Durham got deep on a high crotch kind there. Kind of a reaching high crotch. Yeah. You know you got to be explosive with that, Chuck. Or yeah, you really do. It's, it's awful hard to finish that like you said. If you're going to reach for it like that, you, you yeah, better be pretty strong. And we got two more for Nate. Yeah, Nate fought that off too. And again, Nate's and doing Nate, the can uh, ride this out. He'll have a four, four to one lead. Fifteen seconds That's to go. That's right. You know, and Nate's you know Nate's not doing anything special, but he's wrestling very sound. Yeah. You know, he's wrestling counter. That guy takes a shot. You block his shot. You spin around and get the two points. You just got gotta gotta keep him down. I can't give up that one here, Chuck. Yeah, boy, and it's gonna be close, nice, but he's gonna nice. hold off and good effort, he does. Good That's right. Way to end the first period. Four one. Nate Morgan. Nate defers. So we're gonna have Durham's choice here. Durham. Durham is going to choose top here. I know we talked several times today about that not being the preferred choice a lot of times, but but also in the upper weight sometimes too. They think yeah. I can keep that guy down. So. They don't want the weight on top of them. So. Exactly. Yep. So Durham's going to be up here. Uh, uh, Morgan goes to a short sit there, but he's back to his base quickly now on his belly. Just got to be careful not to get his knee too close to his head and that's exactly caught right. In the cradle. Yep. Uh, nice job blocking the hand there on the power half. Yeah. But again, he's got to get to his base. Yeah. He's too susceptible here to get in pen. Trouble right here. And there you go. He was flat. Durham got a half on him, and Nate's in trouble right now. See Nate. if he can't turn back into him, and he has a little bit. He's got to he drive just, those hips over. Yeah, uh, he just couldn't get his hips flipped in time, and there you go. Durham sticks him. 231. Yeah, Nate, Nate wrestled a pretty decent match there, just... Uh, I thought he wrestled a smart match. Yeah, I thought so, you know, A very smart match, so and uh, unfortunately just didn't have the horsepower there to get no, it done. So, no. 
He's got to defend that a little bit better, and uh, that'll come with some more seasoning. That's right. That's right. And, you know, again, Nate is only a sophomore wrestling in a pretty big class you right. know, with, right. with other guys. So here we have 220. We've got Josh Roberts and Mikey Ellison of Williamsburg here. Hey, you know, one thing we saw, Chuck, through football, we know that our kids need a – they all need a steady season in the weight room to work on that overall strength. And, no doubt about it. And I think as our kids get stronger, you're going to see better production out of them. No doubt about it. On the mat, on the field, everywhere. Yep. Yep. So, again, tied up here ear to ear. Not really an advantage for either guy. Not much you can do off that. And j yeah. So now we're back to circling here. Yeah, and Josh is one of our funk wrestlers here, so – you never, you're never sure what's going to happen with yes, this whole the, thing. Yes, the unconventional is conventional, as yes. I say, with him. Yes. So we shall see what he does. Back to the tie here. Ear-to-ear -ear collar tie here. Josh trying to get some kind of wrist control. Ellison's got an underhook in there, but can't do anything with it. So we're back to split. And again, Ellison kind of fakes a shot there. Nothing really happening. A lot of, a lot of motion. Ellison trying to pound the head, force it down. Maybe get a cheap one. Got a stalling warning on red here. Yeah, he, uh, yeah we're just uh, not a lot of action on either side. I think it could have went double Could have been double stalling very easy. I agree with you. So well, Robert's yeah. trying to get in on the hip, uh, and he can't do it. And Ellison sprawls and turns it into two. Just so there's another head up on that Exactly. Shot. There's another example of a defensive takedown like Morgan had in the last match. Unfortunately, this time it's against East Clinton, not by East Clinton. He's getting really high. He's got a suck back. Yeah, three. and he's, he's got to watch it. He's probably a little too aggressive on the yeah. throat there. But but he sucked him right back to his back, and Roberts is in trouble right now. I think he's, he's, off. he's got a blade off the mat, it looks like. Yeah, you can't be pinned if you're splitting no, it. But now he's back now. in now, yeah. Really a, really a veteran, veteran move by Ellison there to know to pick him up and drive oh, yeah. him back in. Short time, and 10 fact, seconds look at to go. Ellison again, he is not going to let him get away. Roberts got to fend this off. He's, uh, oh, he tries to reset it. Yeah. And uh, we're going to get through it. Yeah, Roberts hung on, but, boy, that was close. And Ellison, on two separate occasions there, actually drug him back in bounds. So, right. like I said, a, a pretty veteran move there by Ellison to be aware of where he is and know what to do. Nice move by Roberts, too, to try to get out of bounds. Right. Unfortunately, just wasn't able right. to do it. And, you know, he could have – you know, one thing is to – it could have been a lot worse if he had been able to change up and go to another combination. We could be down 8 nothing right yeah, now. You're, so. you're exactly right. But, again, you can only get three back points on, on the same combination once. Right. So you're exactly right. If something else would have happened there, we could be in real trouble. So 5 nothing here to start the second. Again, starting the same way we started the first, just kind of feeling each other out. Josh has got the real. Two on one there. Josh tries the front headlock but misses. Yeah. Now you've got Stalling Green. So both wrestlers have been hit with Stalling now. Next one will be a point for one of them if we get another warning. Again, circling. Josh is on the inside. Ellison's on the outside. Yep. Well, they change this. Josh again going for that headlock. Ellison doesn't let him have it. Yeah. Josh got to change things up a little bit. He's, this kid obviously sees that uh, front headlock coming every time. Right. And, you know, Josh is a, a tall, lanky wrestler, so, you know, that's there you go, getting out. probably his kind of move. But Ellison oh, yeah. with a nice shot, really. and Boy, Josh just got caught. He went up to his knees, and Ellison just drove right to him. And he could be in trouble, Chuck. If Ellison can sink his hip here and really crank his elbow up. Yeah, he spreads the legs, walks yeah. to the head, I think. Yeah. Roberts is doing the right thing here. He's on his side of his hip, yep. and what he wants to do is actually crowd Ellison and keep running into his hips if he can. Right, and try to dig that opposite elbow into the Exactly, mat. then lock him and roll him through if he can. But, right. but again, on. he can't do it. You can tell Robert's hips are already turned back to the right. mat. So He's got to try to keep that margin of between the shoulder blade and the mat. And yeah, and he's not holding it for long, I don't think. No. Ellison's really tight on that, you can tell. And he's got the arm. If Josh so. can follow him, get the leg over here. We, you know, He's doing a heck of a job, Yes, Chuck. he is. Yes, 12 he is. seconds to go. If he can fight this... You know, we're, uh, we're at seven seconds, and Josh has just got to hang and on here. And Ellison readjusts, so again. that just saved Josh, I think, right there. So, whew, two straight periods <laughs> ended on your back. That's not the way you want to do it, but two. give him credit. He hung on. Two five-point periods back-to-back. -back, but yeah, he hung on, though. Give, but you know what? You're still alive at this point, Chuck. That's right. And like we mentioned, you know, with Josh, he's yeah. a thrower. 
like Morgan Toll we mentioned before, those guys are never really out of matches. No. And you don't know how much energy that. Uh, That's right. Ellison oh. Had it. Yep. Again, Josh Stuck went back. to a sit out, got caught on go. his oh, rear. Oh, 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 he's got it. Got to keep on screen. Oh, this yeah, is, and Ellison yeah. there. I, I think it's Ellison over. Ellison caught him again. And I, yeah, unfortunately, that'll do it. You know, Roberts just got caught in too many bad positions. Yeah, there. that's what yeah, it boiled down to. 4 14, third period. Uh, gallant fight. It just was uh, just kind of sloppy there, Chuck. Yeah, I agree 100%. Yeah. Well, you know, unfortunately, that's one of those things where, you know, a funk wrestler <laughs> sometimes is their own worst enemy. I, agree. I think that's what happened there with Josh. Yeah. yeah. So here we have 285. We've got Peyton Vest, and he's going to take on James Norris from Williamsburg. Peyton's had a rough day today. Let's see if he can't uh, get things going here the way he wants. So, boy, okay. Norris is aggressive there. Drives Vest right out of the ring. At least uh, Peyton registered a W here earlier with a with a forfeit win. Which well, I'll tell you that that's a great point you bring up, Bill. Because you know, again, if we didn't have anybody there, we you know, we wouldn't have gotten those points, those or points. we'd be giving up six points every time. Right. So, right. So, you know, it's nice to have somebody there. And I know we talked about Peyton before. Wanting to get down into that 220 class, and I'm sure he's going to get there pretty soon. But Yeah, he's still giving up about four pounds from what I understand. Right. And with time, he'll get down there and be more competitive at 220. Oh, without a doubt, without a doubt. Now we've got to find someone else for Coach Taylor to throw in there at 285. Right. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, unfortunately here, Norris has got him yeah, pretty much where he wants him at this Norris point. Norris looks like a butcher here. and. Uh, yeah, you can see Peyton had both arms trapped, and yeah. you know again, there's not much you can do there when he's got both arms trapped and you're you're on your back. So, so unfortunately, Norris makes quick work of him. 45 seconds into the first period, and the question is, does Josh get a match yet? Josh Jones well, looks like he's gonna uh, get his hand raised. Yeah, here. unless they, unless Williamsburg had someone there, we're not aware of. It looks like. Josh is going 4 0 so far with four four fits. And Anderson's going to get it up. Anderson Van de Winsey here looks like he may have a match. Okay. Well, Anderson could have a match, but we're. Now it's going to be a forfeit. Could have bumped him up, I, I suppose. I guess it is, yeah. I thought maybe Coach Taylor had bumped him up, but I guess not. So a Anderson receives a forfeit at 113. Christine Abrams receives one for Williamsburg at 120. And, that's, and so uh, it looks like it's it. That'll be it. Yeah. So that's the match. So uh, oh, we, we can momentarily catch, uh, wait and get our team Mr. Matt here. Baker and get him on here as we just finished up our. Uh, I think he heard. He, that's the last thing he wanted, Coach <laughs> Rayback. He's he's exiting <laughs> wow. the gym as we speak. So. I, I thought we'd get him on. Maybe he's going to the bathroom. Now he's going to concessions. Concessions. Stand, there so. you go. So we may get him back. Thought we'd get Matt on here for a few comments. Was that? I must. I must have. Must be camera shy. So uh, he's coming back here this way, though. We'll get him on here and see if we can get up. And unfortunately, Williamsburg up on that one, 60 to 15. So well, the Astros unfortunately not a lot of head-to-head -head matches, and when you have that, you have to win the ones that are head-to-head. -head. And yeah, we yeah. didn't get it done. So and you can't depend on winning on. Uh, by the scale. You That's know? right. That's right. So, so that's uh, East Clinton's fourth match of the day, which means next we're round. Coming down to the last round here, Chuck. That's right. Next round, East Clinton will take on the Panthers of Lachlan. Five, yep. So, and uh, let's see where we're at here with uh, there's Lachlan's and. Uh, Lachlan's got a few uh, few kids highlighted here at 138. They has uh, Esben Garcia, a junior, second-year wrestler, placed fifth at the Madaria Invitational. He's six and five. Tom Lilly, a sophomore, 145-pounder, uh, second-year wrestler. 170s Ryan Nelson, a tenth grader. Says rookie season, so he's. I'm a, guessing that's his first. Yeah, uh, he, he could be a little raw there. Um, then we've got 182 pounder Matthew Godby. Uh, he's got 11th grade junior second season. Uh, Charlie Brewer, 12th grader senior first time he's wrestling. And at 220 Otis Strotter, uh, junior sophomore second season. 
fifth at the Williamsburg Invitational. Right. And they're coached by uh, Mike Sherlow. Uh, it says here the coaching staff has a total of 25 years of experience. That's interesting because I know this is Coach Sherlow's first year as a uh, Lachlan side coach that I'm aware of. I know they had a different head coach. Has last he been year, an so. assistant there? Um, to be honest, I don't know. I don't recognize him, so okay. I, I couldn't say. But, uh, but you know, Lachlan has been a program that, uh, you know, it's been up and down over the years, I know. Right. And, and uh, a very young team. I know they had last year, and, again, that continues this year. I've um, always felt in wrestling, uh, you know, as a coach, you want to surround yourself with guys uh, – Unlike myself, who are too old to go back on the mat. Yeah, exactly. But you want exactly. to get some young guys and a variety of weights right. who can go out there and instruct those kids and make sure that they're good in good sound technique. That's exactly right. That, that's a big part of coaching wrestling right. is actually being able to you know, show the technique and wrestle with the technique that you're trying to impart to the kids. So, right. Yeah, that's a good point. And I think the kids enjoy that when they're out there with the coaches. Definitely. And, definitely. Hey, can I beat the coach today? And, <laughs> right, uh, right. So that makes it fun for everybody and, and creates a competitive environment. That's right, and that's what you certainly want to breed in wrestling is a very yeah. competitive environment. Yeah. I was uh, shame that we don't have Cameron Klein today. Cameron uh, didn't make weight, and um, he could have been a big contributor at that 182-pound class for us. Yeah, that's right. We definitely could have used him. Uh, looking at 182, you know, that is a uh, – with the exception of Indian Hill, everyone had a 182. So yeah, it would have been a good day of competition. Yeah, for we've him. Uh, he'd have gotten some matches, and unfortunately, the or the converse of that is that we've had to forfeit all those matches. So yes, we've given up those six points every match. So, and that was something that in wrestling, uh, you know, coaches get their calculators out, especially in dual meets, and they start doing. Exactly. Oh, are we going to win this one, this yep. one, or can we afford to give up a pin? And uh, I, I can tell you from experience, I guarantee you, Coach Taylor knew the score going into every one of those matches. Exactly. You know, and that's uh, part of it, you know, positioning people. And, uh, you know, a related experience from when I was in high school, our 98-pounder, which they don't have anymore, right. um, he was a freshman, and our coach conditioned him not to get pinned because <laughs> we had a great dual meet team, and he knew – by figuring matches that if this kid didn't get pinned, that we were going to win almost right. all our duel right. meets. And, of course, in those days, that would have been the second to last match, right? So yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, know, you would have known, hey, we're right there at the right. end. So. Exactly. And, you know, things have changed through the years. As uh, we've seen, it used to be they always started lightweight and worked the heavyweight. That's right. That's exactly uh, right. I think for a couple years they did a flip of the coin where you could start with the heavyweight and work backwards and inverse that. And then um, I don't know. I don't remember that. Yeah, I, I think there was a year or two, like when my, said really? my brother was wrestling, yeah. he would have to start out the match, uh, unless that was a league rule to particular right. to that school. I don't know. And then, um, and then now we have it. They draw it out of a hat, and uh, right. they start right. at that weight. Yeah, and I can tell you, you know, I wrestled heavyweight in high school, and uh, you know, it was kind of, you know, it, it was tough knowing that a lot of times it was probably going to come down to you. Right. Right. You know, and. Uh, you know, that's not always the position you want to be in, obviously. But, no. uh, yeah. so, you know, now they mix it up, and you may or may not, you know, wrestle last or first, or, right. you know, you don't know. Back in the day, you know, like you say, well, we always knew. Right. You, know, you always knew when you were going to go. Right. And sometimes you want, you know, you share that. Uh, being the last guy, you can either share, or, you know, it'll be glory or disappointment, <laughs> and it's shared by everybody when you rotate the weights. That's exactly right. That's so. exactly right. It's a, it's a tough way to go, but, uh, you know, that's probably the, I hate to say it, that might be the easiest aspect of the sport to be in that position. Without a doubt. You know, Without so. a doubt. But uh, it's uh, it's been a good day of wrestling today, Chuck, as we yeah, We've seen a lot of good wrestling, a lot of good wrestlers. Yeah. be interesting to see how this last round finishes up. Again, East Clinton in the last round will be taking on Lachlan, and Lachlan... Uh, not quite a full lineup, and in fact, it looks like, uh, what did we count, Coach? One, two, three, four, five, six wrestlers for That's, Lachlan? Yeah, on the sheet they gave me, they've got six listed here. So um, Nine for East Clinton, so. Yeah, we, we need to win some on the mat. I mean, it's nice to have those forfeits, but, right. you know, the bottom line is you want to win the ones that you've got a uh, human-on-human type of situation. And, uh, exactly, and it? Looks like uh, we're going to get matches for all those guys. Uh, right. 
depending on what happens at 138. Again, uh, Gage Morgan's been bumping up some today, and we'll see right. if he's going to wrestle Garcia or not at 138. And that's the other thing, you know, that is unique about wrestling, maybe a little less now than in the past, but uh, sometimes there was a technique where you would weigh three guys in at a weight, and right. they didn't know who you were going to put on the mat until uh, it was your rotation to put the guy on second. Right, a little gamesmanship, yeah. 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 And uh, that kind of made it fun in dual meets where right. you really weren't sure who was going to wrestle who, and uh, sometimes... Some coaches try to shield wrestlers from wrestling other people. And, and the, of course, the reverse of that, sometimes there's a wrestler that wants a guy, too. And they right. go after and go, you know, right. and figure out what weight class that guy will be at in the duel, and they'll go after him. So. Right. And, you know, the great thing is if you've got, a, say, a state qualifier at 145, and you've <laughs> got a state qualifier at 152, and you want to get those two kids together, you can bump that kid up. Right. And, and you can get two state placers, which is... Until we get to March, you don't get to see that until that's that exactly time. right. That's a pretty rare occurrence. Right. So that's uh, that's a good situation to be in. And you know that's one where I'm sure the the fans love that more than the coaches. Like yeah. you said, a lot of times from a coaching perspective, they'll want to protect that wrestler right. and his record for seeding and everything else. Where right. as the fans, we want to see the two state qualifiers. We want to see it, and you know it's a gamble because <laughs> if the kid wins, uh, when you go to the seeding meetings where they place you in your sectionals. Right. You can say this kid beat this state qualifier exactly, or state placer in some exactly. cases, and that may get that kid the number one seed. Which or uh, the opposite, you may lose a seed because of losing that match. You may so. lose the seed, and and uh, for our fans that don't understand that aspect, is if you get the first seed, normally you're going to get a draw of the the less experienced and less successful wrestlers. Exactly, and uh, puts you your first match should be a relatively that's right easy match. That's to right. Through. And, you know, we see that in the NFL and the NBA. That's sure, all a seeding Sure, the seeding, right. The right. point being you want to try to get the best matchups you can. and so Because right. you want your quality kids, uh, you want to try to give them a little bit of a break so that when they get to those final matches, the tough ones that they have to win, they haven't expended a lot of energy in getting to that point. Exactly, exactly. So. All right, we got a couple So, of again, we're, yeah, we're just uh, – Welcome up. Okay, we're we got just, a – Riding out our break here till we get uh, we yeah. get the required 45 minutes in here, and we've got uh, North College Hill and Williamsburg getting ready to wrestle on uh, mat one. And the Indian Hills and uh, Roger Bacon on the other mat. So let's uh, pull up some. I guess we'll take a look at North College Hill and Williamsburg here, Chuck, and see how we we uh, what do we got here? North College Hill. North College Hill. Uh, they've got some impressive kids, though. 120 of Tim Sutton, uh, sectional champ, district qualifier. Uh, 126, uh, I can't read the first name. I think. That's Makai Jones. Makai Jones, yep, a he's district a, He's alternate. a tough wrestler, yeah. 170, Connor Wilson, 207, or 2013 district qualifier. And at 285, Michael Harris, sectional runner-up and district qualifier. So Right. Three district qualifiers on that lineup. That's a pretty good team there. Yeah, North College Hill is a, a really a top, top tier program in Division Three in the Cincinnati area. So a very nice uh, pro, uh, new school down there too. Yes, it is. Yes, they uh, they just had a new new uh, new everything pretty much, with the exception of a wrestling room. I've been told, which yeah. is unfortunate. So yeah. well, hopefully you know, they can remedy that situation. Yeah, but. an interesting sidelight on that is when I was down there for their tournament, uh -huh. uh, looking at their Hall of Fame. One of their graduates was the architect on designing their new high school. No kidding. And they have her huh. picture up in the hallway. So it's kind of neat to see the graduates coming back and that contributing is. to their communities like that. That is. Because, hey, let's face it, that's what this is all about. Exactly. You know, at this level is about preparing these kids for, you know, the next level. Because like we talked about before, obviously there's no professional wrestling. Right. I guess there's professional sports entertainment, but there is not professional wrestling. And well, we again, with the exception of, of the MMA, right, exactly. there's really no future beyond the Olympics and college for a lot of these kids in wrestling. Yes. And so, uh, you know, again, this is a, really when it comes down to it, it's about building character. Yep. And uh, wrestling uh, not only builds the character, but tests it quite often. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. And we're seconds away from starting the Williamsburg-North College Hill match here. And... Uh, 
I do not know what weight this is we're starting at, but I'm going to venture to say it might be 145. Yeah, I think it is. If, if I'm not mistaken, that's Damon Bridges from North College Hill. Okay, and this would be and Nate. I believe that would be Tarvin then from. Uh, and uh, this would be Nate Golden for Williamsburg? No, Tarvin, I think. is. Oh, it's Tarvin. Okay. That Tarvin, Coach? That's Trent Brewer. That's Brewer, okay. Oh, Brewer's at 132, Coach. Uh, that's what I've got here. You have him down at 132? I have Brewer, yep. Okay, so this is 132 pound. Yep. Uh, t Trent Brewer is a 10th grader, 17 and 12, district qualifier last year. And uh, he will be uh, he'll be going against. Okay. Okay. So we are ready to go here with ready the Williamsburg North College Hill match. 132. And here we go. He's got the other match on. He's got that one oh. on camera. And, uh, um, okay, so we got uh, both men on their feet here. Okay, he's on yeah. it now. Good deal. And North oh, College no. Hill with a nice take okay. down there. Uh, 2 nothing North College Hill. Thank you. And, uh, Chuck, I've just been fed information. This is the championship match for the tournament. This Both is. So the winner of this will determine the winner. Yes. Okay, here we go. So good so. thing we were able to bring this one to you. So, again, North College Hill in control right now, trying to turn him. He's got oh, he, that far He does arm turn him, caught. Chuck. And yep, and let's see. He's a near-fall predicament leg. right now. So uh, see if he can't if stop he can Brewer from bridging. And it looks like he did. So Brewer could be in trouble right here, yeah. Coach. He's uh, and he's a lot of trouble right now. Yeah, he sure is. Uh, you can pick up that arm, pick and up the head a little bit. You can see, yeah, he's got uh, good. Spread. He's got both arms contained. Hips down. Yeah, he's got that's a good pinning place right there. And yeah, there's the call. So 51 seconds. So. North College Hill picks up the pin to open the championship match here. And so it's now six nothing, North College Hill. So team uh, score six nothing. So the winner we, of this walks away with the first place trophy. That's right. The winner of this will be the winner. So one thirty eight. Got Do Kieran Ford from North College Hill, and we got Dawson Davis, and a tenth grader. Dawson Davis, yep, nineteen and nine, and he's a district qualifier also. So there you go. Pretty impressive to be returning district qualifier as a sophomore. Yeah, nice squad here for the uh, Yeah, Williamsburg the is, is a nice-looking team. So a uh, little flurry of action there. They go at it pretty good. Ford's headgear comes off, and we stop the match. Your friend, excuse me, his headgear comes off. We start stop the match. And the referee brings him back to the middle, and friend gets the headgear. Head back in That's place, right. and, and we're here we go. go. So, again, tied up. And, and uh, good aggressive action out of both men right now. They're, uh, yeah, the officials trying to get some control of this. Yeah, thing. they're they're getting after it pretty good right they, now. They are. They're banging each other. And oh, look nice. at that, Davis with a nice shot. Yeah, it was beautiful. Really Got pretty shot. Deep, yes, he did. Up. And uh, it was looking like he was getting ready to return the favor there. Chuck. Yeah. So again, friend, to his credit though, he is uh, he's working down there. He is trying to get up and. And like we talked about a lot, I mean, you know, that bottom wrestler really does have a responsibility to try to score, too. Yeah. Or, you know, he, he would be susceptible to being called for stalling. So. Yeah. And, and um, scrambling and keeping at, and that's a tough thing, you know. People don't understand that person holding you down. You may give that first effort, and it may go to second effort, and sometimes three times that's before right. you get away. Oh, so nice Davis single. giving the, the automatic escape there. He Can't kicked he him to start, and... He's got a yeah, step friend here. Let's see if Frank can step through. Oh, he oh. turns the corner a little bit, but yep. enough to get him. So, yep. two all, or sorry, two three now. Not quite a trend is up well, because he's got, of the a, escape. He's got a half, in, and he was yeah. trying to take him down from a standing position. With yes, a half. he was. Yeah. Unfortunately, they were on the line. So we'll we'll start over now. Davis is down. Again, down three two. Friend uh, up three two because of the escape. Each man has a takedown. Friend looks a little tired right now. Yes, he does. Yep, they're and head Davis to head. Oh, nice reversal. reversal. Nice reversal. 4-3 for Davis. Davis. kicks him now. Four, so we're four. tied up. And I kind of get the feeling that Davis thinks that he can take him down anytime yeah. he wants. Yeah, I, I believe you're right on that. He's and got some uh, short ribs on him. If he can finish this, it'll be. Yeah, body lock oh, steps in, yeah, and that's a nice, nice takedown right to his back. And this could be it. And it is. 
There you go. Short throw right to his back and yeah. makes quick work a friend there. 126 in the first period. So yeah. really a good all-around performance by Davis. He showed a lot of skill there and some good techniques. So. And we are at 6-6. Six, six. We are at 6-all. In this championship uh, match. So here we're at 145. We have Tarvin. And Nate Golden, a 10th grader, 12-8 and eight on the season. No, well, it, I guess you're right. It is Tarvin. Well, we've got two 145s weighed in. They've got uh, Nate Golden, 12 and 8, and then Sean Tarvin at 16 and 10. Well, I take that back. I don't know if this is Tarvin or not. Maybe our I score, think they just said score this table. Is friend. This is friend. Who is it from? This uh, is friend. Who's the other Who's guy? it for Williamsburg? Okay, this is so Tarvin. Our apologies to Kieran Friend. Oh, uh, friend, friend. Uh, our apologies to Adrian Ward because I guess I was calling him friend last match. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Well, but again, here we have uh, Friend and Tarvin. Friend from North College Hill, Tarvin from Williamsburg. And Friend, friend uh, with the early takedown in control here, but Tarvin's working up to his feet. Tarvin's getting ready to get in a scoring position, it looks and like. Tarvin, what kind of a funky type move himself, and yeah, it backfires. Tries, yes, it did. Friend brings oh, it back it, to Matt Oh, and he's got a, oh, got a friend, short cradle there. Friend could make him bake on it. Tarvin reached back over the head. And he, yeah, he pretty much gave him that cradle, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, he did. And if he cannot keep that leg there, he's going to be in some trouble here. Yeah. And, you know, it's kind of an awkward cradle in the fact that, you know, it's a far side there. But Yeah. And, but oh, if he can get the back exposure, he's stacking up Yeah, some, that's some right. Points. It won't matter. And so it's yeah. definitely a near fall criteria right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, and it, he's. Yeah, he's, Tarvin he's, not doing a bad job blocking off, but. Yeah, he's in worse. Friend just yeah. rolled him through, and there it is. So. So Friend with a pen. You can see Tarvin knows he made a mistake. Yeah. 104 the first Pretty frustrated, period. yeah. And again, I think Tarvin, Tarvin knows he didn't give his best showing there. Yeah, yeah. But uh, congratulations to Kieran Friend. Nice win there. So next up, 145, we have Damon Bridges from North College Hill and Dylan Bailey from Williamsburg. So and Dylan Bailey is a ninth grader and he is a he's 14 and 12 this year. Okay, and Bridges, I, I'm not sure what he did last year, but again, like I said, I know he had a pretty decent season just on my recollection. Now, so. if I'm not mistaken, Bridges did wrestle 145 in some earlier matches, right? Yeah. Yep. So, so Damon deep oh. on that, and boy, that was now that could have been an illegal. Yeah, that that could have been close to an illegal slam. Of course, you know the. Uh, the thing in wrestling is if you pick that opponent up, it's your responsibility to return him to the mat so he doesn't get hurt. And generally the rule is your body has to hit the same time their body has to hit. Well, that, that's more of a layman's rule. I mean, it's not really the rule. It doesn't right. say that in the rule book, but right. generally that's, that's what people look for, okay. right, that, that if you hit first, then it's not a slam. Right. But uh, In this case, he just dumped him on his head. Yeah, and, and I'm, I'm not really sure what the call was, whether it was called out of bounds or just no takedown, but... And we had no score given and no uh, no slam indicated, so we're just restarting in the middle. And Bridges, his credit, just uh, offered his handshake yep. there to let him know, hey, you know, it wasn't intentional. So and we're still zero zero. Still zero zero. Seventeen seconds in. So pretty explosive start there. Yes, for sure. So Bridges in on the leg quick again. Yeah. And 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 boy, oh, oh, rolled right through on the head and arm. Yeah, kind of a funk roll there again. All about whose hips are highest at the end. And Bridges yeah. had his hips up at the end and. He ends up in control with the takedown. Bridges got to watch clasping there. He's real close to. Yeah, he is. He is. So we're out of bounds there on the edge, and we're going to start over again. Bridges will be up, and and Bailey. Uh, Bailey will be down here. Bailey right now is getting a little bit uh, muscled, but is competitively in this. So yes, he is. Yeah, nice sit out. Couldn't quite come out. Couldn't right. finish it. So he goes back to his base. Can't stay there. Goes to his bottom can't stay there and there's that. and you know what all that motion he made bridges lock his hands yes he did so you know again that that's a great thing on the bottom sometimes if you can just keep moving right and you, you can may. force that guy into, into that mistake of locking his hands and again Four. yeah like we talked about before that's a technical violation you cannot lock your hands around the wrestler's body unless you're pinning him on the mat and those can definitely be hurtful points as the match goes on without a doubt Good stand up there. If he can get wrist control. Uh, yeah, Bridges staying tight to him. That's what you want to do in this situation. Bridges is but good. again, if you don't return him to the mat pretty quickly, they're going to call you for stalling, and that's what they did. So Bridges makes a smart choice and just lets him go here. And Bridges got a stalling warning to boot. So. Right. 
And he's stacking up some uh, bad uh, criteria. Yes, he is. Unfortunately, he's already been hit for, for stalling and uh, yeah, and locking hands. So, But uh, need to get good inside position. And they're right now, they're it. just bullfighting for that. Pretty much, yeah. Kind of out. Now Bridges. And Bridges, another nice takedown, steps up, and again, this uh, time, the referee does call it an illegal slam. So the next one's going to be a little trouble for Mr. Bridges. Yes, it will. You know, and I have to be honest with you, Bill. I don't know your thought, but to me, that first one looked a lot more aggressive than that one. Well, the first <laughs> one, he came down on his head. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And, you know, I guess maybe it's a thing where cumulatively the referee had seen enough to, on the second one to call it. Right. But well, he's sending a warning to Bridges that you can't be taking him up and exactly. uh, smacking him exactly. down. Exactly. Bridges, man. again, to his credit, though, went in on a single and about had him lifted again. Now Bridges is behind him looking for a trip. Bridges should just kick him out. He can't control him here. Yeah, at this point, you really can't. And uh, he's going to get busted for stalling. If he well, doesn't. remember, he's not in control right now. So it's, right. there's no takedown. So so that period, the first period ends with a score of 3-2. to two. And, uh, and again, Bridges, one of those points was a penalty point. Yeah, so and, and Bridges has been maybe the more aggressive, but... Uh, but down that, on the board. Yeah, down so. on the board and... Uh, Got to have that controlled rage when you're on the mat. That's that's exactly right. And uh, okay, Bailey chose down, and again Bridges wants to go neutral, so he lets him up on, gives him the automatic escape. So a, it's now four two. It's a calculated risk, and if he can pick him up, and oh. Bridges dragged it, he did. He gave him the take down, and on right the, on the edge. For you guys watching at home, that would be. Uh, um, when they do that, they go out of bounds on a takedown. What they're looking for is the man performing the takedown keeps his feet inside the circle. Yeah, exactly. And, in fact, a lot of times you'll end up with a scenario where it'll look like an NFL receiver trying to keep two feet in on the sideline, yes, right? exactly. And exactly. Uh, you can see I thought Bridges tried to do that at first but realized he didn't need to. He was close enough right. that he could just finish it. So we got, yeah, so we got a little discrepancy in the score here. And yeah, I'm not sure that that's right, but... Yeah, 5-4 is what the, the referee is saying. Yeah. And uh, uh, Bridges has been promoting most of the action, but just not yeah, in a yes real Yes, he has. Way. That's right. Very aggressive, and uh, but not uh, not to his benefit, unfortunately. Those so are far. the kind of kids a wrestling coach always says, man, if I could have that kid in my room, yeah. what I could do with him. And, right, uh, right. Uh, and that's the thing. He'll just need just more seasoning, more time. Nice single. He's obviously got the physical gifts. Yeah, now if he can get a successfully, you know, tree top him or trip him. And that's which what he, he does. Nice yeah. trip there. So another nice takedown by Bridges. 6-5. And now he just did. <laughs> and another thing's going to get you penalized, Chuck, is if you watch the clock while you're on the mat. Uh, I, I, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt and say he was looking at his coach in the same corner, but but I'm afraid you may be right. He may have been <laughs> clock watching there, as we like to say. But Yeah, we've, we've seen it. A yeah. couple times this year where kids are looking up at the clock yeah. hoping that the time is going to run out. So, but. again, Bridges gets him the escape. Uh, that tells me that, you know, Bridges is doing everything he can to avoid another locking hands penalty. Yes. yes. And, but, again, also leads me to think he thinks he can take down Brewer whenever he wants to. And so. he's been pretty successful with and that. And he has. That's true. You know, most of Brewer's points have been off escapes or penalties. So Of course, if you let Bailey get the takedown, then that blows your whole theory. Bailey, excuse me, not Brewer. Bailey, yes, yes. And... And Pretty nice. roll through, nothing. And I think they may refer to that as a deshaler, um, where they get that single and the man that's in trouble rolls through rolls on that. Through. Yeah, I believe they do call that a shaler. And uh, one of Coach Dalen's favorite moves. Uh, yeah, uh, I guess that's a signature move for the former uh, Quaker program there. I, I believe so, game. yes, I believe so. So... Um, so, again, Bridges and Bailey circling here. Bridges has uh, just got to get some of the uh, fire back. And Bailey, you know, he's he's sitting in a good position with yeah, – uh, yeah, yeah, I agree with you. I'd say Bailey really has wrestled a smart match. Right. When, Bridges you know, when, has got all the pressure with the penalties at this that's point. That's right. Bailey, good job with his hips fighting. Bailey can, get, Bailey can Bailey get – Bailey making a takedown just with his hips here, Coach. Yeah, if he can get around, and he does. And he does. And he gets a cradle. Oh, Bridges is in trouble. Yeah, he is. Bridges is in trouble. I don't think he can be pinned, though. If you look, I think his 
Yeah, I think you're His right. shoulder is up on Bailey's chest. Right. But it's a good resting position. Oh, it certainly is. Points. That's right. And, uh, and I guarantee you, Bridges is not resting right no, now. No, he's, he's Bailey just, is, but Bridges is not. Bridges is hoping, can he make it? So that's the end of the period. Three near fall picked up there. And so we've got, Bridges has got himself into a little bit of trouble here. Down 11-6. Yep. It's his choice. He's going to have to go down. He's going to have to and dictate some action here. Now, Chuck, let me ask you this. As a coach, would you prefer to see him get away and take him down or reverse him? I always you know, I'll be honest. I mean, reverse obviously is more points, but to me, it really doesn't matter. If you, get, if you escape and get a takedown, that's three, though, too. Right. So. That's, that's what I always would like yeah. to see. But. So he's going to. I'd take either, though. <laughs> and he gave him the point. He did. Automatic escape given there. So we're back on our feet. So he's he's thinking at this point that he's got the edge, meaning Bailey. Right. And uh, Bridges has got to recapture some of that aggression. Well, and Bridges again in on that single. and Good quickness. Bridges gets in there so yeah, quick. Yeah, he's got a burst, doesn't he? Yeah, he does, but he just doesn't finish. That's right. Yeah. His technique's and not quite there. No. And if he could finish a little bit better, he'd be a pretty dynamic type yeah. of kid. Yeah, for sure. And, and again, oh, into a body rip. lock, into a, yeah. That could have been a four-point move, and then we may have a tie. Yep. And it was, yeah. And we Took him down to his back, so that was a we got a new short game exposure. Here. But, yeah, all tied up. So, Bridges, his credit, tied it up. Yep. We just put – we were about ready to put the gravestone on top of that. That's and, right, uh, yeah. Let, let's see what he does. Now, unfortunately, Bridges looks like he's starting to gas out a little bit. Yeah, here. and he can't afford another and penalty That's point. right. We've already been hit for stalling. It'd probably be in his best interest to kick this guy. Yeah, I agree with you. go back on his feet. I that's agree. what I would do if I was his coach. I would, too, because you're down by one. You take him down, you could potentially win the match. Right. Uh, I, I think strategically, you don't want to ride this kid too long. Right. And given Bridges' quickness, I think he could get two or three takedowns in the 50 seconds that are left. I agree with you. And I, I don't know. And there we go. What we just talked about what he wanted to avoid. He gets hit for stalling again. And now we're going to see a point, which is going to put them up yeah. 12. That's his second stalling call, so that should be a point. That's second stalling. Yeah. Second one. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so now 12 11, Bailey. Right, so and Bridges, now, if you let him go, your takedown is. That's right, to only no tie good. it, but Bridges oh, just signaled he asked for an escape there, so we are going to be tied up here. Both guys on their feet. Excuse me, not tied up here. And uh, uh, Bridges should be, no. Should be, should be 13 11. Should be 13 11. Yeah, should be 13 to 11. And on the opposite match for uh, Astros fans, they have started the Lachlan and East Clinton match. Cameron Block is leading off for the Astros right now. And we I'm going to correct you again, Coach. That's Gage Morgan, not Cameron Block. I'm sorry. I've got, I've I've got very, those very two, similar body types. I got though, those so. two mixed up, Chuck. Bridges with a takedown here on that two. So he just tied it up. It's 13 all. It's and again, I, I reiterate, he should be kicking him here. Right, because he should got, not be riding him. He's what, got enough two? time to take him down right. or win this. And he's already been hit twice, so there you go. Bailey's Bridges starting to look tired to now, down. too. Right. Bridges gets him the escape, the automatic escape. We're going to go back on our feet here. Good coaching so move. This is going to come down to, uh, to the wire here. This is a good match. Yeah. And he's just got to be a great – he just does what he's been doing. He can get the takedown. Yep. And, and there it is. And, and I think you're right, Coach. You hit it on the head. I think Bailey just hit the wall there. Yeah, he did. You, Bridges, again, if Bridges was smart, I'd kick him and take him down one more time. Yeah, because they potentially might have to go to overtime. Otherwise, oh, yeah, that should be potentially dangerous. That is potentially dangerous. When – when one wrestler is on his feet and the other one is totally off on him like that, wow. totally off the mat, that's a potentially dangerous call every time. And so that's kind of more on the official for letting that get away. Probably from shouldn't him. have gotten quite that far. Right. You're right. But so we've got six seconds here, and we've got Bridges up by. Uh, uh, we've got some discrepancy here on the score, but yeah. And over on mat uh, one, Gage Morgan is in a uh, two to nothing match at the end of the first period. And, um, and we will get back with the Astros uh, here in a few minutes. 
As, and again, uh, we've got all kinds of questions going on here on Matt, too. And I think, Chuck, we had the score the way it was. is 15-14 uh, after that. It looked like uh, Bridges was in control. Yeah, I agree with you. I think we'll have to uh, go back and look at the tape maybe and yeah. figure out where. Uh, <laughs> Our new system that we'll be instituting will have instant replay. Right. There we go. You heard it here first. So we can be proven wrong instantly. Yes, Coach. that's I, what that means. GTVR, we will have instant replay for you at home, and you guys can be the judge as to what happens. Technology. It ended for me with the microwave pizza, but uh, <laughs> we keep on. <laughs> Rick said it was the eight track. So now, I have to ask you guys, what's an eight track? <laughs> <laughs> it had eight tracks. No, I'm kidding. I, my parents had one of those, so I. Yeah, you've seen them, right? I've seen it. Yeah. That's right. That's what we call obsolete technology. Yes. It's in, it's in that museum. Yes. Yeah. Smithsonian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, over on the other mat, Gage Morgan is down seven to one to his opponent from uh, Lachlan. Lachlan. Although he's in a scoring, uh, Gage could score here. Uh, about a minute fourteen to go in the second period, and. Uh, uh, Lachlan kid looks a little tired. He's yeah, spent a lot do, of energy. But, but Gage looks pretty tired, too. Yeah, so yeah, they're, they're both waiting to get this one over That's with, right. It's been a long day for everyone involved. Yeah. And so uh, here again, we go I'm again. I'm just not sure Gage is, doesn't, oh, well, they're yeah, kind of a half-hearted shot. Okay, so. they, now we have 14 to nothing. No, I don't okay. think that's correct. 15 14. We were 15, right, 14. We were we right. Were, so, we, six we were seconds vindicated. To go, 15 14 bridges. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Bridges up 15 14. Six seconds. Now, not much not much risk of getting hit for sawing in six seconds, but it certainly could happen. So, yeah. he's got to be aggressive here with how he rides this six seconds. Out. Yeah. And uh, he rode the ankle. Good move with six seconds. That You're not going to get busted for stalling on that. And, and he just hit. He just hit Williamsburg for fleeing the mat, so so that gives Bridges a two-point lead here. And he could even let him go, go if he wanted to. So this one is, for all yeah. intents and purposes, over. Uh, Gage Morgan just uh, succumbed to a pin in the second period. and uh, So that's it. Bridges comes away with a short vic close short victory, 16-14. to 14. And Boy, great effort by both young men in that match. A lot of heart shown by, by both young men. And that makes it 15 to 6, North College Hill. And let's get back to the East Clinton Astros now as we have Cameron Block coming up. Uh, Cameron's 3 and 1, correct, Chuck, on the day? So Cameron Block here. Uh, Cameron's 3 and 1 today. 3 and 1 on the day. Yep. And he's and got Tim, Tim Lilly. Lilly. 10th grade sophomore. Oh, and. Second year wrestler. Yep. Uh, and very similar in uh, body styles. They are. And you know, I just want to say there was an example where I think. Oh, nice! Cameron's Woo! funkiness is kind of working against him, though. Wow. If he could have finished that. Yeah, coach, yeah that would have been, been phenomenal. Yeah, but, it would have been. But uh, again, like I said, I think one disadvantage to being a wrestler like Cameron and more of a quote unquote funk style is when you wrestle someone like this that doesn't have much experience that isn't going to react in a typical way right. well, to, uh, to a wrestling move. And so the, the funk might work against you. Exactly. And so there's Brock finally gets a takedown there. And yeah, Cameron's uh, see if he may go a little simpler here and just try to try to put this young man like away quick. Trying to the cradle, but yeah, that little far a little side bit high cradle. And, and good roll through on that. He's lucky. Yeah, he's got to keep his hips in good position there. Yeah, got to set this a little bit tighter. To you get really it. do, yeah. But there you go. So no back, yeah, no right. two point two back points given there. Yeah, and I'll take it. I, sure. Uh, you know, I thought maybe a little quick, but uh, uh, yeah, I agree with you. So there's an escape by Lily. Oh, oh Lily with a nice, down, sh nice yeah. aggressive shot. Really no setup or anything, but a now good, if he down there, a there wild shot. Lily just lets him. Yeah. Wow. wow. The old spin drill in practice, coach. <laughs> yeah, I'm it sure is. You're familiar. Four with. to four. <laughs> we got a Donnie Brook going here. Yeah, we do. So. Uh, uh, both of them are a little sloppy at this point, but uh, we're hoping Cameron's experience is going to show through here. And uh, I think it will. But again, you know, you can tell. Both nice. Oh, nice to slide duck by under, there, a duck under and slide by, and was not able to score there. Yeah, but. you know, and one thing I'm seeing right now is there Cameron. You go, follow uh, it. Nice, nice. Way to dump that off and turn yeah. that into a takedown. And he gets around behind and tries to set up the cradle and. <laughs> 
Okay. So, you know, real quickly, it's become 8 nothing here. Or 8-1, excuse me. Uh, <laughs> we, we have lost control of the scoreboard, but uh, we are not sure at this point what we're looking at. I think that was pretty close when they added a 4-4. Yeah. Yeah. Um, of course, you know, Cameron had some back points after that, I think, and a right. takedown. So oh, I, absolutely. It might be 8-4. That, that would sound reasonable to me. But we will find out. Uh, yeah, in the championship match, while we're while, while we're in a break, the score out here. You got uh, Williamsburg in control right now, but you Spencer got Spencer Clowney for Williamsburg. Yeah, and Clowney looks like he's getting ready to put this one away. Maybe, yeah. maybe not though. Now well, we've got an escape for North well, College Hills. North College Hills able to work to his feet there, and so. You know, these are both guys that have a lot of experience. Uh, Tim Mullins, I know, has wrestled at least two or three years on their high school team, and I don't know what he did in junior high. So, right. You know, these guys aren't, uh, you know, there's not going to be any any easy takedowns here. There's a nice little slide by there. Good group of sophomores for uh, Williamsburg. A lot of these middleweight kids are all 10th graders. Yes, yes. So they have some good things to look forward to in the coming years. Certainly, certainly do. So. Again, Mullins is going to bring him back. Oh, to the back. he's got nice back control. points, too. Yeah, that should be your fall yeah, criteria there. Yeah. But uh, that was a beautiful trip to the back. Yes, it really was. Um, shame that he wasn't in a position to score points on that. Unfortunately, he was already in control, or that would have been a beautiful takedown. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. And, again, we're still working things out on the East Clinton mat. North College Hill takes down. Just a few glitches. And uh, so back again, Mullins and uh, Mullins and Clowney. Clowney. Yeah, and Clowney in control Not right now. Clowney, Not Jadavion though. Clowney, no. <laughs> uh, he's going to be busy. Oh, look at that, contract. Mullins with a nice sit out, turns and faces him, gets one. And nice job by Mullins there to get one. Should be a point from. Well, oh, he didn't award it. Said he's off the He mat. did not award Chuck. it. Wow. I agree with you. I thought he had got clearly got it. Well, that. you know, that may have been a situation like we talked about earlier. It may not have been an escape, but it certainly was a loss of control. Yes. So. Yes, I agree. Either way, it should be a point. Yeah, and Clowney's just holding on for dear life again. And he's going to do the same thing, and, and the there thing we go. Is you can't. You can't. Uh, wow. And he just bullied Mullins right there. Just bullied yeah. him. Yeah. So there we go. And there's your one. Yeah. There's your yeah, one. There gotta you be go. a two and a yeah. one there. That's that's right. So Mullins doesn't even know it yet. <laughs> there we go. So yeah. now he finds out. Yeah. So Okay, uh, looks like we've got the score fixed over here. Looks like uh, six to one. Six to one. Okay. Well, so, I'm, 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 oh. Apparently we have no idea what we're doing. So <laughs> six one block. <laughs> we're Probably beginning the second period. Again. Low single John Smith move and uh, Yep, definitely John Smith's signature move yeah. there. John Smith, one of our Olympic gold medalists and coach at Iowa State, was famous for the low single and Oklahoma shooting. Oklahoma State coach, hate to correct Miami. you there. Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State, oh my goodness. I apologize to those uh, Cowboy fans out a lot, there. A lot of Cowpoke <laughs> fans on our radio network, I'm sure. but <laughs> They are probably upset with me right now. That's right. but uh, Yes. But, yeah, yeah John Smith. Uh, Great wrestler and coach in collegiate ranks. Yes, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Coach, his brother was a four-time NCAA champion. I believe you're right. Which but, is a uh, very rare occurrence. And uh, So block again on that ankle. And low single again. Looks like Lily couldn't fight it off this time. So block now up 8-1. And Cameron Block could start, and if he can get a little back exposure, could start thinking about a tech fall here. Certainly getting that way, isn't it? But he's yeah, inside it like crunch cradle. He's got some back points. He's got him locked, and Lily did a nice job rolling through, but he he's is going to get the at back least, points. He's going to get at least a three-point oh, back Oh, he's got exposure. his three, yeah, and he, he may stick him out of this. Yeah, Lily broke the lock. Nice job there. Nice job, Cameron. He switches the move. It. Cameron jumps right to the half there. Yeah, and nice. I think he might have him now. Yeah, I think so. And you can see Lily Kid's at this point. Yeah, it's just... I think he'd seen enough. So and at 3.23. The second period there. We have a, a pin by Cameron Block of the Astros. Right. Charles Erdman's going to pick up a victory here, 152. 
And then uh, I think Lachlan's next one's going to be at 170. And this is going to be uh, Morgan Toll for the Astros. And, and Ryan, Ryan Nelson, Nelson a 10th yep. grader. This is his rookie season, as they have written down. So. All right. So, you know, again, Toll's only a second-year wrestler. Yeah, so that's, this that's isn't a real mismatch as far as Not a big difference but, there. But oh, just look, you can see Toll is obviously a lot more aggressive. And and I think I think Toll didn't know what to do. I think he thought he hurt him. And well, I think the thing there, too, is, uh-oh, Clowney. Clowney. Clowney with a fall on the way for Williamsburg. Down. He loved so, the Toll with a two. blast here. And yeah, Toll uh, now up 2-0 on a yep. quick little takedown there. And Morgan kicks him. So, we're 2-1. It's good to work for Morgan to do this. Oh, that's right. Give Morgan a chance to work on some of those yeah, takedowns and things. He really needs to develop a variety of takedowns. Nice double by Morgan. Yeah. Well, you know, not only that, but I think, you know, we see Morgan kind of, you know, run out of gas conditioning-wise. So. Right. But, unfortunately, uh <laughs> Quick work. The match is over. And, and Morgan gets a nice pin 31 there. 31 seconds. Um, yep. So, again, still works out as a nice one for Morgan. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, gotten, pretty tough being a rookie wrestler in high school. Oh, yeah. So, Especially, as you said, in the higher weights. Exactly. Uh, you get to pay your dues pretty hard. Yep. Matthew Godby at 182 will get a, uh, we'll get a forfeit for Lachlan and then our next match will be at 195 with Charlie Brewer, a senior, first season, and he'll be going up against Nate Morgan. Yep. Good opportunity for Nate to hopefully pick I up I agree. Hopefully w. Nate can get some work done. And I He's got his hands inside. Yep, so they start the hand fighting like we talked about. Nate's on the collar tie. And... Uh, yeah. They, they got so, again, not a, not a lot of action so far, just circling so, and kind so of feeling we, each other out. Yeah. Not a real real attempt at a shot. No, there is that's an attempt a nice at a shot. shot there. Nice and deep. And, again, pretty rare to see a guy take a double shot yeah, like that in heavy weights like that. Now, Nate push, pushes yep. the head away and spins around. <laughs> I'm saying you see exactly why those big boys don't take right. a lot of shots. Right. Nate made him pay for it. But, again, Nate uh, got yeah. called for locking so hands. We're not far from a stoppage of action here because we have uh, a blast. The key is, can Nate hold on and not oh. give up anything beforehand? Wow, and that was a pretty nice move there, too. That really was. That could have very easily been an escape on yep. top of that locking hands yep. penalty, but Nate held on to his credit. So it's going to be 2-1 here when they reset the action. Morgan will still be on top. And Nate's got to be careful not to get busted for another... Or rather, Brewer's got to be be careful. Oh. And, well, again, you know what? Nate's way too far in front. Brewer just keeps crowding him. This Brewer's be, had some nice shots here. This is Chuck. trouble for Nate. This is trouble He's for Morgan. got to slip that head out. Got to slip yep. that head out. Good. He got the head away. If he can get his hip up and over and yep. out, he'll be all right. Yep, but I agree. Now he needs to keep that top arm straightened out too, yes. so they can't yep. reach over. Uh, Morgan's in real trouble still on his hip, and there we go. There's the reversal. Yeah. So he rolls it through, doesn't give up a pin there, but Brewer's inexperience let Nate get down to that's his exactly right. belly yeah, that, there. Against a tougher opponent, that would have been a would have been a pin pretty yeah. quick, I think. So but, see uh, if Nate can capitalize here and get out of that. Yeah, Nate's gotta move. He's gotta do something here to get this back to even. Looks like Brewer's trying to get a cradle in. He is. Not sure he knows what exactly he's trying to do yeah. with it, but but Far he's eating up cradle and he's got it. And I believe he's going to get. Yeah, he's got a two pointer there, Chuck. Yep. So five to two. Brewer now up five two. We go into the second period here. Yeah, Nate's going to have to. Uh, I think uh, we defer. Yes. Yeah, Nate defers, and they can't defer back, so they're going to go down. <laughs> Good guy. That's an interesting move, like we talked about with the heavy guys. This yeah, but again, I think it still comes down to the point that you know most most wrestling coaches still feel that you ought to be able to do something from down there. I agree with you. And and Nate's got to capitalize in this situation. There we go. But with a situation where you got a first year kid like Brewer, you may not want to do that. Right. And Nate just made him pay for it right there. Yeah, he sure did. 
Nate's looking Nate's to finish it off. Oh, he got the leg extended, Chuck. Yeah, Nate's putting a lot of weight on him right now. Yeah, I think a lot of pressure. And there it is. There's there the fall. Go. There's a nice win for Nate. Nice win for Nate Morgan. It's at 2:24 of the second period, and uh, Nate Morgan picks up. Uh, is that his third win of the day, Coach? Second or third? I'm, yeah. I'm not sure which. That's a nice. That's a nice effort there. And now we've got Josh Roberts and Otis Strotter. Otis Strotter. Otis is an 11th grade sophomore, or what? Oh, this is wrong. He's and either 11th grade or sophomore, Chuck, but it's okay. his second season. And he was fifth at the Williamsburg Invitational. Okay, so he's had a decent season up to this point. Right. Roberts, uh, you know, again, like we talked about, Roberts a little taller than Strotter. Roberts more of a lanky type, Got body type. So he's fighting hard to stay at a lower level than Strotter right now. See if he's able to continue to do it. Josh has missed several times today on that front headlock. Yes, where he has. Strotter just, well, I'm not sure. There's, oh, he's got a, the height advantage. Yeah, he should be able to get exactly. it pretty easy on him, you would think, right? He's got to do a little bit better setup on it. He reaches for it. Yeah, he telegraphs. Telegraphs basically. it, exactly. Yeah, that's what, so Josh Roberts with a double there. Strotter, nice sprawl there to fight it off, but Roberts yep. doesn't let him go to the leg. He can push, pull it, get and around. There we there go. You know. He got around, turned the corner on Strotter. So there's a takedown, 2 nothing by Roberts. But again, he can't stay out in front like that. And, and Roberts is... Uh, better position think, now. He's got pressure. If he can get the arm bar. He's looking for an arm bar, but just didn't go. Uh, far side cradle. And he may. He's got uh, it locked. He sits through. He can control that leg. Like, looks like I think he's got him there, Chuck. Yeah, I'm not sure. I can't see Strider's shoulder from here, but he's got that leg tied up. He certainly got it in deep. Yeah. no doubt about it. If if Strider's shoulder is clear, there you go. Obviously, Roberts oh, is pushing yeah. him away from him to get his shoulder off of his chest. So 25 seconds. This should be a, It should be a pin here, I would think. At very the very least, it's going to come. He's going to get three, but it would have been yeah. nice to finish it right there. And he wasn't able to, unfortunately. But again, like you said, three near fall. Short time here, under 10 seconds to go in the period. Looks like Roberts is just going to ride him out and go into the second with a 5 nothing lead. Josh should be careful here with so little time. I wouldn't be rolling on my back. No, and I'll tell you what, you're right. Strotter <laughs> just about just about reversed him. There. He almost put himself in a bad situation. That's right. Man. Well, we got a second. I want to send a shout-out to Alice Hook listening to us in Jamestown, Ohio. Just got a nice message from her and her dad. So, Alice, thanks for listening. And okay, here we've got Strotter is going to be down to start the period. And he's set. And Roberts mounts. Hand on the elbow, hand on the belly. There's the whistle. Strotter crawls forward. Yep. Really not, not, not much of a move, no, just trying to create some much. separation. Josh tries to rake him around. He's got to be careful. He's yeah, getting too far. Yeah, and again, he's getting caught out in front, isn't he? Yeah, he yeah. is. Tries the half. Strotter blocks it with his hip. Strotter again cross face, gets caught out in front, and this time Strotter grabs that leg like yep. he should. Got to get that cross face in tighter for people that don't know what that is. It's when you bring the forearm across the face and grab the opposite shoulder, and a real effective move if you get it tight enough, if you can imagine somebody's forearm in your nose. Yeah, that's a... Uh, that's not a pleasant experience. No, for sure. not at all. And uh, Josh has got, looks like he's got the cradle again, Chuck. Yes, he does. This time he's got the near side, though. And I think. No, he doesn't. Far side again, so. Uh, three more Another points. three point. Eight nothing now. Josh needs to put it together here and try to. Yeah, and, uh, sitting on the foot. I think he's going to try some kind of a stack here. Yeah, it looks, looks like, like he is. Yeah, he's pulling through here. and Yeah, three quarters hard to get most of the time. It sure is. And I'll tell you, especially with a, a bull neck guy like Strotter, it's awful tough to pull his head down that far. Right. That that move takes a little bit of luck to get somebody with their head yes, down. Yes, it does. Down. Yeah. And, and, you know, really that's more of a move you'll see more in the lower levels. Right. Not so much in high school. Right. But when you do, it, it's painful. Oh, it yeah. hurts. Yeah. But, and, uh, uh, again, Roberts, not good pressure right now. Wrestling on no, his knees. No, not at all. Shoulder pressure is non-existent. Yeah, that's not really a good spot to be in. I think he's getting tired. 
And Strotter senses it. There you go. And as we talk about, he's too far to the head. Yeah, Roberts' lack of pressure and being too far out let Strotter have that one. Kind of a free escape there. A takedown and some back. Well, we're not going to see any of that right now. I don't think I so. Think not in the time that's left. But no. I think that Josh well, just, Strotter, just don't give Strotter up. Strotter could, could finish this. Oh. And get the box that was close. Boy, I'll tell you. Strotter got in deep on that, Chuck. He did. That, that should have been. If Strutter had his head out, that would have been a takedown. Right. That really should have been. He just couldn't quite finish it. Give Roberts credit for fighting it off, but but really the way he controlled the match to that point, he should never have allowed Strutter in that deep. No, I agree. Less than 10 seconds to go in the I match. Agree. So we're going to go neutral here, it looks like. We're going like. neutral, so he's going to give up that Roberts point. Roberts chooses down, right, and Strutter goes neutral, <laughs> so free escape. He, yeah. So... And that's probably good for Josh here, I think, because he, he looks a little gassed. And yeah, I agree. He's up on his feet. Now he's got that front headlock. He's he does. Let's see if he can do something with it. He's trying to snap him down with it. Gotta get and there we go. And now, he finally got his hips clear. Spin around. There we now, go. Nice takedown. I think Strotter's gone, too. He's looking a little peaked at this he point. He may have hit the wall as well. Yeah, You're right. I think so. He's resting down there. Yeah, not a lot of action on the bottom. Josh should be putting that shoulder in his back. and. Hey, you ride the hips, you're going to get busted for stalling. That's right, yeah. that's uh, And like we talked about earlier, you know, that's a real point of emphasis in Ohio high school wrestling. You know, they want a guy's in motion scoring yeah. points. And you know, right here, you might think about kicking him out. Don't use the energy. If he's that tired, it gets on his feet, burns 30 seconds. and That's right. Although you do have to remember, Strotter really it's just been, about took him down at the end of yeah, the second yeah, as well. So true. He's been a little more tired, aggressive. but... But does, yeah, how much energy does he have? We can't really say at this point. Exactly. So Roberts is running the half oh, here. Yeah. And now if Josh Strider, gets his weight. Oh. There we go. And I think, like we said, Strider didn't show a lot of fight there at the end. No. I think he was no. He was pretty tired. 4.43 of the third period, Josh Roberts with the fall. And... Uh, we are here at the heavyweight match. Yeah, Peyton Vest going to get a four for here at 285. Peyton Vest going to get a second win. Congratulations to him. Josh Roberts going to have a per or uh, Josh Jones is going to have a perfect day today. That's right. Go go there, guys. And then Anderson will follow him. And there's Josh. There's Anderson. Two more Astro W's, and it looks uh, like that's it. I think that's it. Teams are lined up here, so just a second, we'll get to the match score. Yep. Uh, but now we're going to take it back to the action on mat two, and we can see here North College Hill. That is Jameer Bankhead, and I believe that must be Mikey Ellison then on the bottom, and it is, and Bankhead wow. just pinned Ellison. So. Not sure what the score is, Chuck, but when we left this match, it was 15-12, to 12, and I know there's been at least two pins for North College okay. Hill since and, then. And so. there's another one right there, Bankhead. So now we've got our heavyweight match again. We've got big Michael Harris coming up here, and he's going to be taking on James Norris. And Michael's a quality opponent here. Michael around. certainly is, like we talked about before. He had a really good year last year, and it's off to a great start this season. So right. Michael was a sectional, only continue. sectional runner up last year. So uh, we should see a good, good competition here with him. So again, uh, Michael trying to get wrist control, but not really a lot of action here to start with. Collar Michael ties. has been one of the more active heavyweights we've seen, though. Yeah, he has. And, uh, you know, like we talked about, a lot of big guys won't take shots and things like that, and he's not afraid to. Right. And, boy, he is aggressively trying to pummel he, in that underhook. He under might hook. try. Oh, he got the And there we go, a little cement mixer, cattle catcher, whatever you want to call it, wow. right to his back. And, wow, 25 seconds. Yeah. And uh, that's, uh, I think, three or four straight pins now. For I believe him. so, yeah, yeah. Looks like North College Hill is getting control of this. But um, let's see. And I that know, might uh, be it. I know North College Hill has a 106, I okay. believe. Maybe they don't. Well, they have one. Maybe they don't. They have one of the young lady wrestlers here. Uh, um, yeah, she is. Uh, that's Kristen Abrams. <coughs> She's 120. Williamsburg has actually two wrestlers. And, uh, okay, so we're going to get a treat here. It's uh, Coach, unusual. We're going to get to watch Tim Sutton here from North College Hill. And Tim's a good – Tim is a quality wrestler. Yeah, yes, he is. He is. And, uh, and the Abrams girl, uh, 
saw her win her first match a few weeks ago. So she, uh, I believe she is a freshman, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and she's she can win. We've yeah. seen her do it. So, um, and yeah. I, I, she comes from a wrestling tradition as well. Her older sister is also on Williamsburg's wrestling yes. team. Yes, and, and uh, their she, dad is an assistant coach. So, they're uh, you they know grew up with that exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And uh, well, we got a, Tim's got a little chicken wing type yeah. going there, and and he's got her staff. Boy, that's tight. That is tight. And that's a tough situation. It to really be in. is, you know. And your back's exposed there. And did he call it? I think he's going to call potentially dangerous okay. there, but he's going to give three back points on it. So hmm. uh, Tim's going to go back to work here and see what he can do and see if Christine can't uh, yeah. can't make something happen here. Yeah. Yeah. He. Uh, he had her screwed into the mat pretty tight yeah, there. Yeah, that's uh, that's one of the scenarios you definitely don't want to be in. And you can see here he's going for another one. He reaches through. He's got wrist control. Okay. Yeah, we we, uh, you know, this is uh, the the arm, the arm bar, bar. Oh, double arm bar, double arm bar now, or a double gable as Dan yes. Gable coined yes. years ago. He's going to wind the clock as we call it. Yes. As a circle to the head. If he can get that one last leg over that big step, he can probably pin her with this. And a lot of times. That's a very painful if they move can too, sit the on, If they can walk through and sit down on yeah. it, uh, you might as well punch the clock at that time because yeah, the match is over. Having been in the other position, <laughs> I can tell you want to be pinned. <laughs> yeah. You want to be pinned. Because there's happens. not a lot of oxygen going that's in. Right. That yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's – And he's got and again, it again. Same scenario, and as she has pinned. So, yep. Tim, again, puts in some nice work there and, and gets a nice win. Of the first period, and, and uh, that was an impressive performance there by Tim Harris. Or Tim Sutton. Tim I'm Sutton. Sorry. Yep. I'm sorry. Tim Sutton. And that winds up the action. I guess we'll wait a and second. And I think we may have a forfeit here. But, again, I think the wrestling is over. So. Yeah, and I think. Uh, yeah, sorry, right there. And we don't want to be presumptuous at this point. But, um, you know, uh, you know, we don't presume yeah, we'll too much. But we're a... assuming that North College Hill won that match. We'll find out in a second. Right, they're adding up the official team score right now. And but. Uh, we've got Coach Doug Stalen here. Uh, Coach, what did you think about today's uh, performance? I think today's uh, tournament went pretty well. Uh, as far as East Glen's team, I was pretty pleased with them. We went 3-2. and two. We lost to uh, two tough teams, Williamsburg and North College Hill, who were right here both 4-0 uh, and oh going into the championship match. So, um, I was pretty pleased how our, our team worked out today. So. Any particular uh, guys you'd like to, you know, maybe give a shout out to that you thought really stepped up today and uh, performed uh, maybe above what you thought they might be be at at this point of the season? Well, I'd like to, uh, Gage Morgan. He stepped up for us today. Um, we had him wrestling 32, and I think two or three matches we bumped him up to 38. Yeah, at least twice. Recently. At least twice. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, for him to do that for us, you know. Rather than have him go out and receive a forfeit, it was nice just to get him with some extra matches. Right. Um, Caleb Block, or Cameron Block, he had a good day today. Um, he, he wrestled really Yeah, he wrestled well. really well. Um, I'm not sure off the top of my head what his record was, but he did get, I think, three wins maybe. Three wins at least. That right. sounds right. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Nate we had Morgan. A lot it had a lot of heavier weight matches and light matches today. Yeah. There's a lot of forfeits in the lower weights. Yeah, we noticed Josh uh, Jones didn't get an opportunity yeah. to get on the mat. And uh, Anderson, he only had one. I was really impressed with Anderson's first match today. Um, he showed a good fight, didn't he? Yes. He, he really did. He, he lost a match, but he went out and fought hard. And what we asked of him is just go out there and wrestle six minutes, and that's what he did. So. Yeah. And he's getting better every week from he what is we've getting, seen. For being a first-year wrestler, he's making a uh, – very good run and, here. And we've talked about that a lot. Can you mention a little bit about that, about the challenges that face a first-year wrestler in high school? First-year wrestlers, man, I tell I, any first-year wrestler, first year wrestler, it don't matter if it's peewee, middle school, or high school, I would always ask them to come back a second year because your first year, you know, you're just not going to win too many matches. Hard to evaluate. Yeah, so yeah. you come back out that second year, and they really start to see – some progress you know they start to learn how to put some moves together they'll start getting some wins and you know that's when they'll see success you know the first years just get through it and and learn so keep them in the program keep them coming back um so how things look for uh, the well, i guess we'll get the final score here before we so 51 18 north college hill is the champions today at the tournament um doug um uh, how things look 
uh, coming weeks here? What's the uh, schedule look like here for the Astros? Uh, next few, this we're going all hard at it now, here on out. We got uh, this week, we got a try meet here at home on Wednesday against uh, Miami Trace and Adina. Um, and then uh, on Saturday, we'll be wrestling in the Sycamore Invitational. Uh, we'll see a lot of D2 schools there, a couple D1. So that's going to be a big, tough tournament for us. And then uh, the following week, that's it's a grinder. We got a state duels, we got a league meet, and a two-day tournament. So, Doug, who do we who do we wrestle in the state duels? We talked about that a little earlier. Uh, we do earlier. not know yet. That hasn't been determined. No, the opponent. Uh, the okay. voting ends tomorrow night, so we'll find out probably Monday or Tuesday. This has got to help us today, though. I would think uh, submitting the criteria of your dual meets. Yeah, having a record of three and two, that'll definitely help. Uh, well, actually, we were three and three with the loss the other night. Um, a tough one, by the way. A tough one, yes, very tough. But uh, I'll take three and three right now. It could be worse, I guess. Uh, <laughs> now, in terms of dual meet wins for the program, uh, how's this rank through the the program history? Oh. Um, I'm not positive what our overall dual uh, team record was, but I know last year we started getting more wins as a team last year okay. compared to the previous years. Good. So uh, we're starting, I believe, think we're starting to turn the corner. Our younger guys are starting to make it up to high school by now, and uh, you know, looking at our lineup right now, really we only got one senior. So next year looks pretty good. And you've got to be excited about the possibilities of Thomas Wright coming back next week. Thomas Wright will be back, um, and uh, Jesse Huff will be with us. So maybe those two might be filling in some weight classes. Right now we're at tw we're, we got 20 and 26. We're empty. So maybe those two guys can fill in one or if not both weight classes there. And uh, with Zach out today, hopefully we can get him rested and get him back up in the lineup pretty soon too. So I mean, you look at our lineup today. We we had three guys out today that should have been in our lineup, and if we added those three in, the North College Hill match, that was a pretty close match yes, there for a while. If we would have filled those three in, had those three guys in, who knows what could have happened. That match could have been closer or, you know, just one win could have changed a difference in how things were going there. So, Right. Uh, Chuck and I were talking during the, the course of the tournament that Cameron Klein would have made a huge difference today, as would have Zach, but... Uh, Zach wouldn't have had actually a lot of matches, but Cameron, we figured, Chuck said would have had four matches. There were four other 182s, three, three yeah. Big weight class, so yeah. I mean, if we could add him in there, that could have made a big difference um, as far as team points going and, you know, just to get him mat time because that's what he needs right now is the mat time, just getting out there and wrestling. So hopefully we'll have him back on Wednesday. So We're um, uh, Peyton Vest. We know he's making a heck of an effort to get down to 220. Where's he at with that, and uh, how would that juggle the, the end of the lineup for you? Well, Peyton Vest, yeah, he's right around the 220, 225 mark. Um, he's actually, a, he's, he wrestled in seventh grade, took a couple years off, so he's a, he's a sophomore this year coming back out. So, you know, we're just trying to keep him keep him motivated, keep his head up, tell him, you know, hey, you're going to have some tough matches. A, you, you know, you're kind of like our first-year kid again. And B, you're giving up, who knows, 10, 20, 30 pounds at different times. So, you know, we're just trying to keep him positive. You know, next week we're going to allow him to wrestle off at 220 against Roberts and see what happens. But, you know, if, if the loser of the wrestle off, unfortunately, you know, is going to have to wrestle heavyweight just to fill the weight costs. And, that's, you know, that's part of the sport. But That's the way it is, wrestling the old days with the wrestle offs and that. It's good to see some of that coming back. Well, it's, it's good to have actually say that we have wrestle offs in the room now. So that's definitely that's helped building our team and uh, making our guys work harder. So, well, coach, we appreciate it. Congratulations on a a good effort today, and uh, we'll be following the Astros here on GTVR the rest of the season and uh, keep on bringing back some victories. Sounds good. Thank you for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Again, we want to congratulate the North College Hill Trojans on the, their victory today, a perfect 5-0 and dual meet record. And uh, I think we see that, you know, they're going to be a team that we need to look out for going into the sectional tournament. Yeah. So uh, The Williamsburg Wildcats had a nice run at 4-1. and one and They did as well. That's shout out to them. And, right. uh, and as uh, Doug said, the Astros could have easily been in a, a situation that, uh, you know, we get a couple guys in here today, we may be wrestling in that championship. Yeah, they, that's right. They were very, very competitive. Very competitive. Well, for my partner Chuck Hale, 
This is Bill Rayback. We're going to turn this over to the captain here, Rick and Lee, and let you guys uh, finish it up for us. Good night, everyone. Fine job, guys. Well, I hope we're in camera position, uh, Steve, but, uh, um, well, you are the coach of the uh, girls' basketball team. Uh, program here at uh, East Clinton. Uh, uh, I guess you had kind of a tough day at Hillsborough. Yeah, we struggled a little bit today, especially defensively. Um, offensively, we're starting to come along a little bit, but defensively, we we really struggle, especially rebounding. Uh, and, but the good thing is we can get better at it. So you uh, you really don't have a lot of height, I guess, in the backcourt. No, we're pretty small. Um, they had a couple girls that had some size, had some you know athleticism, and, and they hurt us a little bit. And that, so you combine with a little bit of athleticism and a lack of our size, it hurts us. Well, that can definitely be a tough thing to overcome. Um, uh, what, uh, what's uh, down the road for you now? Uh, we got Greenfield on Wednesday, uh, so the road doesn't get any easier. Um, this league's not easy, period. There isn't, a, there isn't a night off, you know, a chance to do anything like that. But um, we've got some... Got a couple games coming up down the line, some non-league games that got a chance to really do some things. And like I said, the best part about this league is we get to go compete every night, and yeah. our girls do do that. We fight it. You know, we fight every night, tooth and nail, but we're just coming out on the short end right now. Who's uh, some of your uh, leading uh, scorers or performers right now? Uh, today was Ashley Kaplinger led us. I think she had 13 today. But uh, Brittany Jackson, um, um, she's been averaging – uh, probably our leading scorer, um, Brooke Carpenter, uh, Maria Bond, all them guys, you know, have really been stepping it up offensively, at least over the last couple games. Uh, so that's that's a positive. All right. Well, I know you want to get home. I'll let you go. But thanks for stopping in, and uh, we'll see you soon uh, on GTVR.net. No problem. Look forward to it. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Steve Gerber, girls basketball coach at uh, East Clinton. And I think that's just about uh, to wrap it up here at East Clinton High School as uh, we've had a great wrestling meet here today. I want to thank our sponsor, Charlie's Pizza in Sabina. I want to thank Mike and all the uh, new ownership over there for uh, uh, sponsoring East Clinton Sports Channel on GTVR.net. And uh, it's been a, once again, it's been a great day here at East Clinton High School. East Clinton finishing third in this uh, wrestling meet. Uh, and uh, it's just been wonderful. We will be back here with high school basketball Tuesday night. Tuesday night. With East Clinton hosting Hillsboro in boys basketball action. I just talked to uh, Scott Streber, boys basketball coach. He will join us on the pregame. Jeremy Yankee will be along with uh, all the play-by-play -play action, and you'll just have to tune in and see who else shows up. So, Rick Phillips, it's been a wonderful day. Lee, it has, and uh, we just like to uh, thank everyone for uh, watching our new East Clinton channel here on GTVR, the Global TV Network. Thank you.